All right, so the cooling strategy for Itali is actually quite simple. As you can see, it's a pretty open concept down here, and we've got all the components nicely spaced out along the backboard. That just allows for ease of heat dissipation while any one of those components is in use. Now, if you were to put all of this into a car or a smaller vessel, you'd have to be a little bit more strategic with uh, how you're gonna cool everything down. But thankfully, Itali is a big old cabin cruiser, there's lots of room down here in the bilge now without the big V8s. It's cooler down here and there's a little bit of airflow as well. And all of that helps lift the heat off of the components while they're being used. While you're underway, the number one item that you want to pay attention to, in my opinion, would be your motor controller or your variable frequency drive uh, if you're using an AC system. But eTolly is a DC system and we're using a motor controller. This is a Kelly motor controller. It's 72 volts, 400 amps. So it can generate um, quite a bit of power and heat up pretty quick if you were to take it to its peak. Um, but when uh, Itali is more like a Winnebago of the sea, it's not a performance vessel by any means. And uh, we rarely take it past 76 um, amps. And most of the time we're cruising at about 40 to 50 amps. So we're really not working the motor controller too hard, but you know, we decided that we should uh, make a little bit of effort to keep it cool. Luckily, the um, Kelly controller came with an aluminum base with some fins, and that helps dissipate the heat. But I also added an aluminum plate behind it with a little bit of thermal paste, and the thermal paste helps transfer the heat from the motor controller um, back to the aluminum plate, and then that will just dissipate off. Um, you could you could use a chill plate if uh, you were working these uh, system the system a little bit harder. And a chill plate is basically um, the same thing. It's a little bit thicker. It's uh, made of aluminum and it's got a serpentine channel through it. And what you do is you um, pump coolant through it. And the coolant goes uh, around the plate, like I said, uh, in a serpentine fashion. And what it does is draw the heat from the motor controller. And that's actually a little closed system. Um, they're pretty cool, but you know, we wanted to keep it simple here. And um, you know, when you start adding in a chill plate and things like that, you are adding another system. So it's one more thing that can go wrong. And the philosophy here on eTolly is keep it simple, stupid. So <laughs> we went with the lowest common denominator and just uh, made use of the aluminum base that the controller came with and then added another aluminum plate. Now the I said this was the number one item you want to pay attention to, but a very, very, very close second is going to be your motors, especially if it's a DC motor with brushes. But uh, brush DC motor is um, what this what this boat uses, and uh, let's take a look at how we're cooling this down. Okay, so this is one of the two Lynch motors that we have on board Itali here. We've been running them for about seven years. The model number is LEM200D127. They produce around 13 kilowatts at 72 volts, and the peak output is roughly around 26 kilowatts, which is around 33 horsepower. It's a little bit different than what you might be used to seeing with electric motors that are more cylindrical shaped. This here is what they refer to as a pancake design. And the Lynch motor has a perforated cover, which allows for a lot of um, very good airflow and allows it to run continuous at a constant temperature. It also has some fins in the casting here, and I'm going to assume that that's for uh, heat dissipation. Now we've also done a mod here at the back. Normally you don't have this blower fan set up. You just have a plastic cover that protects the brush holder. But what we did is uh, drill a hole with a hole saw through that plastic cover and um, fixed the blower fan here at the back. So when we feel the motors might uh, require a little bit of airflow, extra airflow, a little bit more assistance, we just turn these uh, blower fans on and that blasts fresh air um, onto the brush holder where the brushes are in contact with the commutator. So the faster these motors spin, the, the hotter they're gonna get. And that's just simply because it's a brushed DC motor. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's not uh, a really complicated setup. It's very simple. Now, of course, you can um, put different types of fans on there. You could modify it so you have continuous cycle 
box fans or something like that. But we, again, just wanted to follow the keep it simple stupid method and um, decided that we would fix these blower fans on and just have a switch and turn them on when we felt that the uh, motors could use um, a little cooling down. And that's pretty much it. All right, so there really isn't too much to discuss here for the cooling strategy when it comes to the charging system. Uh, what we've got here is one of two uh, onboard chargers. These are by Delta Q, they're called Quick Charge, and during the peak cycle, they output about one kilowatt. They're thermally protected, which means if they do hit a certain temperature, they will shut themselves off to protect any of the electronic components. And they also have these big cooling fins on the uh, top and the bottom. With the batteries, we use lead here. That's always been a uh, hot topic for this boat, but um, this allows us a very simple and safe system. If you're using lithium, you're always gonna have the risk of thermal runaway, which can lead to some pretty nasty fires if you're not careful. But with the lead system, there really isn't too much risk of any type of fire. Um, yes, lead batteries can explode if they're overcharged and they're damaged. But uh, if you get a good charging system, like the Delta Qs, uh, with a smart algorithmic cycle, then um, you really don't run any risk of overcharging and overheating the batteries. Uh, another thing to keep in mind when you have uh, lead batteries, just keep your terminals clean, free of any corrosion, because uh, that will just cause um, resistance and resistance causes heat. And that's it. It's a pretty simple setup. Like I said, not too much uh, to get into here. Um, that's just the way we like to keep it on Itali. And uh, that pretty much sums up the cooling strategy for this boat.